Welcome everyone to the new Fly Fisher. I'm your host, Bill Spicer. On this week's show, we're in Labrador, and our quarry is brook trout. Now when I say brook trout, I mean big brook trout. We're gonna use a variety of techniques to take these big bruisers, because versatility is the name of the game. It's gonna be a great show, so stay with us, and we'll be right back. On this week's show, the new Fly Fisher crew visits Osprey Lake in beautiful Labrador. Joining me today is guest Pat Dorian, a retired game warden that resides in the state of Maine. Osprey Lake is located approximately 90 miles southeast of Goose Bay on a large watershed which is a tributary of the Eagle River. It flows into Blackfly Lake about one mile downstream and Blackfly flows into the Eagle River watershed. Over the past three decades the fishing at Osprey Lake has shown continuous improvement. Amazingly, the fish being measured in pounds rather than inches. Osprey Lake and surrounding waters remain one of the most amazing brook trout fisheries in the world. There we go. He come back for it. <laughs> he come back for it. I put it right back in the same spot. I didn't think I hooked him. So whenever you feel that, that he hasn't tasted the hook, you uh, put it right back. And I gotta manage my line here. Try to keep a tight line on him. I might have to do that again just to keep the tight line. Then manage my line to get the line up on the reel. And away we go. Yes, sir. It's not a, it's not a very large one in, in, in standards of, of Osprey Lake. This is considered a small fish, believe it or not. It's about 17 or 18 inches long. Oh, he's still got some spunk left in him. We have mayflies all over the place here. Wow, are these ever powerful fish. Now I, I have to play this one a little longer with this rod because I got a six weight now because I was using a dry fly. And there we go. Now this blows me away. This is considered a small fish by Osprey Lake standards. But it, uh, man, they, when they strike, they strike hard and they really are out to kill whatever they are taking. And away he goes. Oh. <laughs> I love brook trout fishing. Like I said before, I've fished for over 40 years. I still get excited when I get a fish like that. Oh, man. <laughs> well, I'm going to try that again. I'm going to retie my knot. Any fish that you take that's that size or bigger, retie. Don't, don't trust your knot because it's weakened now by that fish. So I'll retie, uh, retie the knot and I'll try it again. Any time is a good time because of constant hatches that are evolving around the lake make the fishing good from all the way from the second week of June on till September. I think once we get into by December, I would start looking for bookings to line that up as soon as possible. I think that would make your flight cheaper. Longer the booking ahead, the better off you will be. Beautiful, beautiful fish.
He's probably 20, 21 inches. Just a nice, handsome, beautiful brook trout. does not get any better than this. Recommended rods and reels are nine foot rods in number six to number eight weights with medium action. Large arbor reels are needed with smooth drags as the fish in Osprey Lake are very large. The lake for the most part is shallow, so floating lines will do for most of your fishing. Intermediate lines can be used when fishing deeper parts of the lake. What's happened is the wind has changed around now. I was fishing that way. Now the wind is at my back and pushing the flies this way. So I've had to change around. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cast short and I'm gonna fan cast, and then I'm gonna cast farther out and do the same thing. And when I say fan cast, I'm gonna cast here, 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 and here to cover all the water I can. The hatches of mayflies were quite heavy, but we had very few rising to take the dry fly. When this happens, change over to an emerging fly and fish just under the surface of the water. Fish on, yes. Just keeping it under the surface as an emerger. And the fish, I could actually see them swim towards it. It was like a V in the water. Very exciting. All right, I managed my line, got about on the reel where I want it. And these fish are, are so big, you gotta let them do what they wanna do at first. When they're still full of vinegar here, you can't force them. Set your drag so that there's enough tension that it doesn't pull out free spool. There's gotta be some resistance, but you gotta all trust your, your drag on your reel. And that's why when you come to Labrador, you gotta have a good reel with a good drag system. Otherwise, these fish will beat you up in a minute. Now I got a six weight rod here, which makes this extremely, extremely fun. I wouldn't bring anything lighter than a six myself. These fish are very large. Beautiful. Just about ready. And this is a good fatty. This is a good fatty. Thank you. Ready? Now look at that. That's what I call a Labrador brook trout. Oh yes. Oh yeah, now he's kicking and I let him go. Oh, that was terrific. I've been fishing over 40 years. That still excites me, that just still excites me. The hatches are sometimes just a plume in the air of bugs. Uh, we've never seen anything like this anywhere else. It's absolutely fabulous and it does give the dry fly fishermen an absolute good chance to catch hatches on these shoals to have some wonderful dry fly fishing. After spending most of its life under the water as a nymph, a mayfly swims to the surface to hatch. This is called the emerger stage. The emerger hatches into a dun, which while on the surface is a primary food for fish. The dun then flies off the water to nearby foliage where it undergoes another transformation to become a spinner. When it becomes a spinner, it will join others and be seen swarming over the surface in mating flights. Some spinners will drop their fertilized eggs, others will touch down on the surface and deposit them. Finally, the act of renewing the species is complete, the spinners fall to the surface of the water and then die. There's no doubt about it, the brook trout at Osprey Lake are huge. Speculation as to why these fish grow so big in this area are, the incredibly large mayfly hatches, 
and the fact that brook trout will cannibalize themselves and eat about anything else that will fall in the water, and this includes mice. There have been reports of brook trout consuming as many as four mice at a time. The next morning we headed to a different part of the lake at the mouth of a small stream. Pat suggested that we try mouse patterns as they work quite well in the area. Now this mouse pattern that I have on is called a shaving brush. It's because it's, it looks similar to a shaving brush itself. But what it does, it moves a lot of water and makes a lot of noise as you pop it. The fish will cue in on it in, in no time. Said there we go. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Wowee. <laughs> On a mouse pattern. These are carnivorous fish. They're vicious. When they attack, they, they certainly try to kill. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. You try to get something that's going to disturb the water as much as you can. And that just turns on the whole predatory response. Oh man, this guy's taking out line on me. All right. Boy, that was really something that actually shocked me. I wasn't ready for it. Boy, and he wanted it. Now I'm up on a rock and there's not much I can do as far as fighting this fish other than let him do what he needs to do to tire out. I don't try to horse him. On a mouse pattern. <laughs> These are carnivorous fish, that's for sure. That is a wicked nice fish. It's a good one, isn't it? He is some fat. Oh, I need my net. <laughs> oh, you got it. I thought it was on my back there. Had a panic attack there for a second. And there we go. Now, if I can get you to hold that for me and see if I can pop that out. Yeah, it's come out nice and easy. About three and a half, maybe four. And there you go. Give me a valve. Oh, and away he goes. Wow, we. Not bad, I've been here five minutes. Not bad, gotta like it. Now, on Pat's recommendation, I'm gonna cast to the inside of the seam and I'm gonna feed out line and let the fly move right down to the back of the, of the run then I'm going to start working the fly back with pops and, and retrieve it like it's a fleeing mouse. And that should instill a real, pre, a real nice predatory strike. So I'm going to try it. Got it. Yes, sir. Good fish, too. Yes. Now, I went on the inside of the seam that time, and hopefully I disturbed enough water to attract the attention of a fish, which I did. That was a kind of a lazy take, but he's got it. Yes, sir. Now, I got a rock there. I got to watch it. He's only just figured he's hooked now. Now, where I'm standing, I got to fight the current now, too. So I got to be got to be careful. I can't use too much pressure and that'll pop my tippet or pull the fly out. So you got to take your time when you're in this kind of current. The fish will tire out eventually. Right now, in this particular lake, these are the top of the predator list as far as fish are concerned. The smaller fish won't be anywhere near the bigger fish because the bigger fish will just eat them. As you can see here, these fish are taking mice, which means that's nat their natural food. There we got him. And this is a bigger fish. This is a quite a nice fish. Want that rod, Bill? Yes, sir. Thank you. Come here, you. Okay, when you grab my net. Yep. Well, there we go. 
nice Osprey Lake brook trout. Now they do become much larger than this, but I'll take this any day. Osprey Lake is uh, good for grandfathers to bring their grandchildren, their sons, their wives, to get a greater connection to the outdoors, to get a greater connection with each other, to enjoy such an experience. Coming here, dry fly fishing together. Uh, the fly-in itself is a just a good time, and this will bring you closer enjoying such a time together. This morning we're over on No Name. Bill's uh, taking a couple of fish um, right on top of the mouse pattern. What I'm gonna use is um, a number four muddler minnow. And what I've actually done, I've actually dressed it. Um, you know, yesterday we had temperatures 70, 75 degrees, a really good Bill Gordon hatch was going on. Um, during the night, wind switched out of the east, temperatures have dropped, got no hatch coming off whatsoever. So the fish haven't seen any probably insect life to speak of in the last 12 to 15 hours. So we decided to go with stuff on top. Generally, muddler's a really good fly here on Osprey and the watershed downstream. We're actually at what they call a no-name pond. A quarter of a mile up is the beginning of the outlet of Osprey. And <clears throat> this stream sort of splits and we get two main veins of water that dump into the small pond here and there's usually fish will stack up in both of these so with that we're going to give her a go right on top see if we can get some fish taken the flies to bring with you would be an assortment of trout dry flies along with an emerger pattern known as the maple syrup also bring mouse patterns, muddler minnows, an assortment of streamers in various colors. Conditions for the next morning had changed. The wind had picked up along with cooler temperatures. This warranted a change in tactics. I got him on almost a whole chicken here as far as the size of the fly. I think we were a little bit too small before, but at uh, Colin's suggestion, I put on a very large fly. And we've only been five minutes, and he took it. This is a good fish. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> now, this is the, the type of fish that Osprey Lake brags about. Let's leave them over there for, the, for a second. And away he goes. Oh, boy. That was exciting. We've moved over into the main lake and, and, and fishing for the bigger fish. They tell me there's the shoals around here just full of these big fish. But I had to go to a big fly this time. The, the, hat, the hatches have stopped, so we went to a larger fly, and that did the trick. Oh, wowee. That was something. That was something. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. As a group, we separated in order to find new productive areas. We stayed in touch with walkie-talkies. A message came over that Pat was fighting a big one. We wasted no time in moving over to see the fish. And boy, what a fish it was. This, for the camera, is unbelievable. Look at that, folks. Look at the size between here and here. That's, that's 10 pounds or better. We're gonna find out in a second here. Wowee. I'll tell you, Pat. I've not seen a brook trout that big in my entire life. 
I've not seen a brook trout. That's that's 10 pounds. There he goes. You know the beauty of that, Pat? A fish that large, you released. No question. No question. You released it. Absolutely. It was just. That's the best feeling in the world, as far as I'm concerned. That is one of the grandpas of the pond here. Yeah. Absolutely critical. Oh. Those big fellows go. No doubt about it. <laughs> that was great. Congratulations, my friend, with a wet hand and everything. That was wonderful. Fish of a lifetime. <laughs> wow. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's show and want to learn more about this show and others in our series, visit us on the net at thenewflyfisher.com. From all of us here at The New Fly Fisher, thanks for joining us. Tight lines, and we'll see you next week.